In order to be heard and validated by the universe, you really have to hear and validate yourself. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast. It's Eileen. Today, we have a very fun and fascinating episode for you. We're going to be learning all about auras, what they are, what they say about your personality, your life purpose, and how you see the world. We'll also talk about how to protect your energy and how to develop your intuition and connection with yourself. Our guest today is Mystic Michaela. Mystic Michaela is an author, podcast host, and fourth generation psychic medium who specializes in reading auras, which are the colorful life force energies around individuals. Her true passion is guiding people through spirit to live their own authentic lives. Hello, Michaela. Welcome to the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm so great. Thanks for having me on, Eileen. This is such a a pleasure. Thank you for being here. All right. So why don't you start by telling us your story on how you discovered your gift and began the work that you do now? Okay. So I've always seen colors <laughs> around people. It's just like smelling to me. It's just a, I, I didn't even think it was a big deal. You know, I like looking back, I didn't even think it was a big deal because I always just saw it around people and it was second nature. So for me, because I think we're the only people that live inside our own brains. So when something is going on different for us than other people, it's hard for us to recognize that, hey, am I doing something different than everyone else? So I, and I come from a psychic family background. My mom's a practicing medium. Her brother is. My grandmother, like all the way up. So it wasn't abnormal in my home life to talk about these things. So it was never shut down or anything like that, which I think helped a lot. But I wanted to be normal. I did not want to live a life like I saw them live. I didn't want to be, um, you know, put out there like that in any sort of spotlight or there's a lot of pre prejudgments about the work, this kind of work. So I actually went um, to college and I got my bachelor's and master's in Spanish education. And I was actually a Spanish teacher to middle school students for many, many years. Oh, wow. And so what was interesting about that was I was like, oh, my gosh, like, I know what aura colors are for, <laughs> for because around my kids, my students, I noticed, hey, wait a second, like yellow aura kids, they really appreciate the grammar lessons to learn a language or um, purple aura kids, they need to make a creative craft to understand the, the language better. So I was actually noticing that these aura colors that I've been seeing my whole life had purposes and had specific kind of reasons for them. And I was really able to first understand, I guess, the use of them. And then, like anything, because any spiritual gift anybody has, it's like a muscle. So the more you work it, the stronger it gets. So as I'm doing this, it was really fascinating to me because then I started getting deeper and deeper messages, things that weren't about language or teaching or anything like that. I I would get really um, strong frequencies from the kids and their parents. So, um, you know, you have kids, kids are very authentic, but then it would be a parent teacher conference. And all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, why are they, why are they treating their kid differently than they are? You know, why do they need their kid to be somebody else? Why, Mm -hmm. why are they wearing these colors? So then it just, I guess, exploded for me. And I was in a transition phase for a long time because I just felt like I grew out of grew out of teaching, but now I teach in a different way. I teach about auras because it's really about understanding your authentic self. That's what auras are about. And that's the journey I had to go on to realize that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And it was a long journey, but I got there and here I am. I love that story. I love how you kind of, you had to come full circle. (laughs) Like you avoided it and then you, but, but your experience teaching gave you so much insight on learning about auras. Like all your information that you share about auras, is it all just intuitive that you naturally know or channeled or like have you learned from teachers or maybe like your family line? Yeah. So all of it is, I have a really good relationship with my guides, my spirit guides. um, And so I am really big on, and I tell everybody this who I work with and when I teach about anything, it's you have to find the knowledge inside of you. 
And if it resonates, it's for you. And if it doesn't, it's not for you. So a teacher, a really good teacher, shows you what you've already known. And so I try to do that for people because that's what it has been for me. So with auras, I, I've always been able to see them. What they mean is something that I had to dive into myself to get closer to people and understand. So I'm also um, very empathic. It's one of my intuitive gifts, which I feel like a lot of us are. So I use that gift in order to get closer to these aura colors because every single aura color has a vibration, has a frequency. And it's kind of like walking into somebody's energy signature. So I have been able to, I guess, personify each color to the point where it's easier to understand which ones resonate with you versus others. And honestly, it's just kind of a way, because I feel like even if you're reading about the colors, the way I write them, or you're listening to me speak about them or or anything really, when you take that journey inside to be like, is that me? Is that not me? That's the thing. That's the work. That's that's where you need to be, questioning yourself and um, asking yourself, does that resonate? So to answer your question, I had to do a lot of self-work on myself to make myself clear enough to be able to cozy up in other people's energy fields and personify each aura color as I see them. And, and, and from there, I write about them and, and hopefully they resonate with you. And it's kind of like, here's my pathway when you kind of you know, go through each color. That's me. That's not me. What does that mean? So, so that's how I do it. Yeah. Okay, amazing. Okay, so let's dive into auras. I mean, what how would you explain this to someone who doesn't understand what an aura is? Like what do you t- like teach us about this energy system? Okay. So, every single one of us has an energy signature. It's your own unique kaleidoscope of color that exists around you all the time. And even if you don't see auras, you feel them. Because we all have an ability to feel other people's vibes. So if you you can kind of feel when someone is really inquisitive or you can feel if somebody's, you know, inspiring or if somebody's, ooh, they're having a bad day. Like we all can feel that and we can get better at it too the more we listen to ourselves and don't shut it out. And I think that's so again listening to yourself. So that's really what an aura is. I happen to see it in colors, but they're all individual. Um I see eight aura colors. Most people have a combination of two. Um, And understanding what your aura is, what your energy signature is, which is just honestly, you can think of them as personality types. You can think of them as just how your energy field operates around you. So you can think about it in any way you want to think about it. But understanding how your vibe is around you can help you make better choices about career or relationships or help you understand, you know, how you are communicating. I think in our society, there's a lot of shoulds. You know, you should you should have a nine to five job. You should um, you know, accept this type of behavior from people. You should have this type of relationship with your family. You should. And kind of going from your own unique energy signature, it's more asking yourself, actually, what works for me? Because the way that it works for me is my best potential reached within that. And so that's really what an aura is. It's your unique energy universe that you carry around with you all the time and learning how to navigate that. Because if you don't, it's affecting you anyways. And knowledge is power. So that's, does that make sense? It's yeah, basically totally. like your, all right, your yeah. colorful energy bubble. So you say that most people have a combination of two colors. I mean, I have so many questions because like, depending on your mood, does your color change? Does the size of your aura change over time? Like, you, you know what I mean? Can you tell us more about how this, because it's not constant, right? So, so how does it change and, and what, you know, tell us about that. Okay. Yeah. Good question. I love when I do an aura reading to look at pictures from people from childhood all the way through till now. I Because your aura does shift and change and move. The way that I see it, this is how I see it, so I can only speak for myself. The way that I see it is I'll see usually two colors that feel authentic, and that's just a vibe, like they feel like you. And then throughout your life, those colors can shift in texture and hue and depth, and they can get ripped 
chipped and torn or they can get blotchy or you can hide them. So I'll see that happen in the aura field around you. And then finally, sometimes you can wear, I call them inauthentic colors. So these are colors that you wear or energies that you wear when you don't feel like you can live life authentically or as yourself. So you put on kind of like a, like an armor or something in order to get through something. Now, when you're wearing an inauthentic energy or an inauthentic aura color, you can feel exhausted, numb, disconnected. You can feel like you don't have options. You feel very uninspired. Um, versus when you're wearing your own aura colors, but they're just, they need a rest or you're tired or you're leaning on one color, more one energy more than the other, you can just feel really burnt out or emotional or something. So that's how they shift and move. And yours is really interesting, Eileen, because <laughs> <laughs> I'll Sweet. see. Yeah, I'll, let me know. I'm curious. It's really good. So I'll see different... Um, like like I said, shapes and textures and things like that. Yours is very unique. And I'll tell you why. You have like a really beautiful, it's like this light sparkly yellow and a really pretty, I guess it is kind of like lavender. It's like a, it's like Aww. a purple, but it's very airy and it's very floaty. And I, I usually don't see auras with that much lightness to them. Usually people's auras are kind of like, Honestly, most people's auras are darker and kind of like heavier feeling or something. Yours is very light. And the sparkles are unique. So when I see sparkles, it's a lot of, I mean, curiosity, inspiration, and how can I make myself better? Like I see that a lot on you. And and it's like always that search and it's kind of like always that, I feel like there's a yellow auras, but yours is very light. Yellow auras are always very curious people who enjoy organizing life for beauty and pleasure and flow. And it's kind of like your environment matches your mind and you have a very busy mind. So I feel like you need to clutter, clutter free it <laughs> to feel safer in here. Oh, that's so true. I, that's what I'm working on in my life <laughs> to declutter. Wait, so are you seeing this right now or is this through photos or previous things that you've seen? Yeah, because like sometimes, because before I talked to you, I was looking through your social media pictures just to see. And sometimes you wear like blue. And I feel like with you, that's when you need a break. Or um, I feel like that's your kind of like, it's almost like you put a door on your aura. You're like, I need to (laughs) take a a second. Um, Because when you're as airy and light as your energy is, you can let in a lot of influence. And I feel like that can get you tired sometimes. So a lot of other people's energies and a lot of responsibilities and a lot of feeling like you have to, um, I should have, should have, should have, like your to-do list can pile up or whatever. So I feel like sometimes you'll kind of, I, I just saw that in you and I'm like, oh, I wonder if she gets like really, um, like sometimes you want to isolate. Oh yeah, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's so interesting. So do you see the aura based on like the picture? Cause you know, from my Instagram, it's not, it's not recent, right? There are things that I post out of chronological order. So do you see like, it's that in that instance, you see the order of that time? Yes. I have oh to see God. people's eyes. If I see the eyes, I'm, I'm better at it. And I'll tell you, this is how I see it. Cause people are like, are you actually seeing it? I get funny questions. Like, how do you drive if everyone's auras? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's kind of funny. So there's your physical eyes and there's your third eye. And kids or when you were a child or most, and and you can redevelop it, your third eye kind of gets dimmed Mm -hmm. with society. A lot of people just kind of, I don't know, pulling you to be like, come on, no, we're not doing that right now. Move on, you know, that your whole life. And my third eye is just, I feel like it's so well developed that it feels the same as my physical eyes. I know the difference, but to me, it feels the same. So when You don't have to see an aura to read them because you can feel them, but you can learn how to turn your third eye back on just through, you know, um, mindful practice and whatnot. So, yeah, so I see them in pictures and videos in person. And that's how I see them. Color shape around like the actual person. Yeah, like with you, it looks like a sparkly yellow, like very light purple cloud. That's what it looks like. Interesting. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) <laughs> okay. Um, what's your aura color? I'm curious. Mine's more indigo and Ooh. purple. And it's like that. It's like my shirt a little bit. Like it's why more. you have that color. Like you have the. I do. I love. 
put it behind me. Just like, <laughs> yeah, um, and your mic is that blue, deep blue yeah. color. <laughs> Sometimes we're attracted to our aura colors a bit, I've noticed. That's what I was um, thinking because like I love lavender and pastel vibes. I My brand is about like airy, light. Like it's... <laughs> that's crazy. That's it's the vibe cra- I like. That's crazy. And I know I see in your background, it's like autumn neutrals, you yes. know, so it's kind of like, let's calm ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> like light and airy. Yeah. Well, you're purple too. So your mind's probably always running with like creative and artistic and, and whatnot, but it's something that you can't always have on. Sometimes you got to turn it off, let it bake for a little bit um, and turn it, back. you know, artists and creative people like you. But yeah, so I do notice that with people, they can get very reflective of their auras in their life and they don't even realize it. I mean, I, mm. I always say auras are in your details. I mean, you could do personal style in auras. You can do health in auras. You can do relationships in auras. You can do how you work out in auras. So it's it's there, it's really in the details just what has lasted for you and what you feel most yourself in, in what context you feel most yourself probably has a lot to do with your auras. Right. Okay. So, so you say auras tell us about our personality and where we're being authentic. Do they say anything about like our purpose in life? I think you said something like that. Yeah. Tell us how do, cause I'm sure people listening want to know because how to figure out their, their purpose in life and how to be more authentic through their aura. Yeah. I say, I say people all the time, don't forget about the title of what you want to do for a living and think about what you, your perfect day would be because that's, that's the better foot to go on for life purpose. So for example, blue people, okay, like blue auras are compassionate, caring, empathic, sensitive people, and they love to give. So in those, I'll see them as therapists and teachers and customer service representatives and things and people on the front lines of crisis handing out blankets. You know, those are blue aura people. So so really, if you resonate with that, you're not going to feel fulfilled unless you're in some sort of job where you're giving to somebody on a one-on-one kind of kind of nature. You'll feel better that way because that your aura does tap into your life purpose. Blues are compassionate like givers and they have to make eye contact with the people they're doing it for. Um, whereas let's say green auras are intellectual, logical, detail-oriented, uh, passionate people. They crave a challenge, but they're more kind of like visionaries, and they're really into sometimes software or they're architects or they're doing something like city planning. So they have to be in a place, and they're loners, so they got to kind of focus on and be the head people in charge. So, you know, you you can't really work for somebody if you're a green aura. You have to do something where you're either autonomous autonomously working or you're working for yourself or it's project-based or you feel like you're learning as you're doing it. It's a challenge. So yeah, your life purpose definitely plays into your aura colors. And if you understand that, then you can be like, oh my gosh, for example, purple people have a really hard time working nine to five. They just do. Some people are fine at it. Some purple auras aren't. And if you're trying to make yourself work a nine to five and you have a purple aura, it can be really hard for you. And it's not that you're doing anything wrong because that's how you'll your ego will keep you in the same spot. It's just like maybe I can maybe I can use my energy instead to find a workaround. You know, so little things like that can help you move forward with career and purpose. Yeah, it makes so much sense. Okay, so I most people don't have your special gift. How do our listeners find out their aura color? Like what are the ways you recommend? Well, I am passionate about making sure everybody knows that they do have this gift. That's like yeah, my okay, big, okay. I, I, because how I we, was, Yeah, how do we strengthen this gift? Then? Okay, because you know, I was like a middle school teacher, so I'm like, you can do it oh, too. I appreciate that. I was, I'm, I'm like cutting it out like, no, I don't, I don't see your color. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'll well, try. I, think, I love it. Well, I think like a lot of it is just how do you feel when you're around somebody? That's the first thing, you know, and, and go by your feel and go by your intuition and go by... Um, you know, how somebody makes you feel has a lot to say about their aura colors. That's the first thing. I did make a special quiz on knowyouraura.com. There's an aura quiz. It's free. It's fast. It's easy. And I, I made it just for this question. It's like, so at least you can start there and be like, okay, let me start. I got my aura colors. Let me start with that. Mm-hmm. You know, so I made that. And, and I also put stuff everywhere. And I think, honestly, most people, when they start reading about all the colors, they can be like, well, not that. Well, that I resonate with and that I resonate with. 
And like I said, it doesn't matter what anybody tells you because my big thing is um, with anything, we are in control of our own energy and our own destiny. And so it's really not about what people tell you, like what I tell you you are or whatever. It's really what the journey you go in trying to discover it for yourself because that's a big mm, thing. Okay. When I started, people were like, well, what's my aura color? And and I felt bad. I was like, oh, I don't want to be like the, I don't know, boss of what you, of who you are, you know? And so my, I really love giving the tools to people. But I think because I'm in the spiritual community, you know, with quotes around it. So I guess like just seeing all the different teachers out there, I really resonate with the ones who are, let's give the power back mm. to the people. <laughs> so love that. Just, yeah, yeah. yeah. So basically you encourage people to like read about all the colors and see what resonates with them. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. See what resonates with you. And, and any, any conversation you have and any journey you take on, uh, when you're doing something like this, oh, like just the knowledge that the insight, the catalysts, the, oof, the downloads that you're going to get, it, it's a huge, they're huge gifts, but, but yeah, you can go to knowyoraura.com and I did make an aura quiz. So. Yeah. And we'll definitely link that for you guys if you're interested. So, um, Michaela, t- tell me more about like the work you do. So when you're helping someone like a client, whether you're doing a, re- like, what do you do besides telling them what their aura is? How do you help people? Okay. So in my, or in my readings, I never know what the topic's going to be. So for me, auras are like the door I open and then we see what pops in. So I'll start a reading with somebody and I always start by describing their aura. And then honestly, spirit takes over and it's just kind of like, oh, what's going on with your brother? Or like, whoa, who's who's this person? Or So it's kind of like walking in somebody's energy and then being able to see all these things that have influenced you or traumas or little hidden agreements that you've made along the way that that you might need to reevaluate um and and I'll I love looking at families. I think, you know, the people who raised us, um the relationships that we have, the dynamics and how it's given us these Sometimes wonderful, I mean, it's always, there's always a silver lining, but the people who raised us are definitely interesting for me to look at during a reading because I could be like, okay, you know, this was your mom's thing. And then you, because of this, you know, maybe perhaps you're not living fully because mom had this agreement and then this is something you need to reevaluate. So that always comes up in, in my readings. And you do this through looking at photos of their family? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's easier because sometimes the way that I work is I like to look at you and I look at your eyes and I start going in for the aura thing. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, there's something with mom. Do you have a picture of mom? Let me see mom, you know, or whatever. So, and then I see mom, I'm like, oh boy, okay. (laughs) Now I get it. So it's just, because I think so many of us have all this stuff going on all the time and we're so busy and life is so busy and kind of like a stranger saying, hey, you were taught this and you're still living this way and it's time to drop it, you know? And just somebody telling you that can take this weight off of you or can make you see like, for example, I use, I I wear, you know, empath auras. So that's like your blues, your purples, your turquoises and your indigos. I notice empath auras to different levels and in different ways. I'll say generally right now, have a real problem because they can feel other people's feelings as their own, but they don't realize how much they mold their own behavior and alter their own behavior and alter their own thoughts and wants and needs in order to fit in to what other people want them to be because Mm -hmm. they won't feel lovable unless. So just to generalize it, I see that in so many different ways with people. And uh, that comes up a lot in a lot of different ways. So just seeing like what your little agreements are or how things work out for you or whatever, and then letting you know can unlock a lot of potential. And then all of a sudden, suddenly you're, you're, you have more, I guess, courage to take a risk or to date different people or maybe to try that job or whatever it is. You can kind of feel freer. Yeah. That's so interesting. I mean, it's very similar to what people do, but it's like you use a different tool, which is your auras and energy reading, but you're still helping people heal from traumas and right. Just make positive change in their life. Yeah. Right. I'm, I mean, obvi- I love therapy. I think therapy is great 
I've been to therapy. I always tell people go to therapy, you know, like that. It's great. But a lot of times uh, I'll hear that, like, oh my God, my therapist told me that. It's like, yeah, you know, and and I'm just looking at a picture that I've seen once of your mom and like, uh, yeah, so it, so believe your therapist because I don't know your mom and this, you know, so it's got, it's kind of, sometimes it's validating for people. A lot of times we aren't validated. We feel like we can't say all these things out loud because we'd feel silly or whatever. And then you have a reading with me and I'm like, I'll say it. And then you're like, oh my gosh, I'm not crazy. And then sometimes you can then release it and take, my big thing is you got to take control. Like when you, when you know more, you can do better. It's big, I'm big on personal responsibility. Once you know something now, okay, go fix it. Like go do, make different choices. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's a big gift of that I, I mean, I just, I feel like I tell people on the phone, you know, spirit uses me on the phone, you know, so I feel, I'm, I'm kind of like the vessel for message, but um, I feel really blessed to be able to be there when they hear things because yeah. it helps. Hi, love. Let me take a quick break to recommend another podcast by our friends over at Asian Boss Girl. Asian Boss Girl is a podcast for the modern day Asian American woman. On the show, you'll find conversations about navigating the corporate world as a person of color, mental and emotional health as children of immigrants, interviews with inspiring Asian women and men, and even blind dates recorded on the mic. Mel, Helen, and Janet started Asian Boss Girl as girlfriends while balancing full-time corporate careers. What started as a passion project turned into a multimedia business that they now run full-time. You can catch new episodes every Thursday and also enjoy over 180 episodes on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or any podcast app. Just search Asian Boss Girl. I have so many other questions for you. I mean, one thing I wanted to ask you is, you know, I've done a few like aura photos where you put your hand on the sensor, they take a photo and it shows a color. How accurate are they? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know the technology. Usually my assessments of people, I don't agree with whatever photo they got. I oh, think really? we're a usually Cause like because a few and I'll tell you my story is like in yeah. the beginning the first one I took was probably 2018 and I did the most recent one I did was like end of last year so I, when I took it or in the beginning it used to be like red and this is like years and I think I was going through a lot of things during those times and then my most recent one the color changed and it became like a yellow a little bit of orange so so I'm just f I mean, first off, it's like, you don't even know if these things are accurate and you're an actual aura reader. So I want to, I want to hear from you. And then second of all, goes back to like colors changing. Yeah. I don't, I don't understand their technology, I guess. Like, I don't know, like, how do they do that? Anyways, I do have some ideas though. I feel like they can get more kind of like surface energies, like whatever you're doing that day. That's one too. I feel like if like, let's say you just were hanging out with your red aura friend and then you're going in and getting your um your aura red on a machine like you might take some residue from their energy with you sometimes it's like what you said you're going through something or you just got off work or that like something's going on in your head and you're in different headspace i feel like they might be more sensitive to that kind of stuff so my big thing is like who you are as a person you know, like who you are. And I feel like because I feel it as much as I see it, it can be a little bit different. Like that's why I love looking at pictures of when people were children. And I have a feeling you were probably a pink or a kid. A lot of people don't keep their aura colors as a kid. Yeah. Why do you say that? And what, what happens to the auras? Why do they change? It's like society and right. like parents. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> okay. <laughs> makes sense. Especially if you're pink, because pink aura kids are very, they're very serious about play and they're very into, but they, pink auras keep that. So what happens is, is if you have a pink aura kid, and I think this is just normal, a lot of times parents are like, um, because pinks are big into escapism and they're big into here's my world where everything works out. And they're kind of big on aesthetic and making things um, really beautiful all the time. And I'm trying to think of some pink, like Paris Hilton's a pink aura, <laughs> I, you know, like that. that right. Yeah. yeah. So kind of like that. And I think parents, a lot of parents, because a lot, you know, we're all humans and then we get these children and we're trying to do our best. And 
we try to impart our what's worked for us on kids, even though they're different than us. And so a lot you like, stop it, or that doesn't work, or no, you'll never make money that way, or that's not how the world works, or this or that. And then it can kind of squash the pink and then um, school and peers and all that kind of stuff, just institutions. It's just like one of those colors that's easy to squash. Um, but I feel like you were a pink or a kid. Is this something that let's say it like you can do the work to bring back that original color? Cause you said you see like yellow and purple or, or is it like, is it your actual or authentic aura changes as you get older? I think it changes as you get older and, and that's okay. But it's fun to play if you are like, you know, I feel like I was a pink or a kid. It could be fun to kind of play in that sometimes or to, to have moments where you know, I'm going to be playful today. I'm going to find my joy today. I'm, today's going to be something like pink auras would be like, today's going to, you know, this is a moment for me. I'm going to really look forward to something because when you go into that space, what happens is, is you throw yourself on a vibe where you're opened up to a lot of, I guess, opportunity to connect with energy that can give you clarity. So you could be doing something completely unrelated to whatever you think your solutions to your life problems are. But if you do something like that, all of a sudden it can hit you. Or you're, you know, when you're on a higher vibe, higher vibe things find you. So that's kind of a way I'll tell people, you know, play in your or your inner aura, your inner child aura, and then see what happens. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Um, let's talk more about like, how do you know when your energy is off? Like you can see it with your eyes, but how do you, you know, what are the signs? like that people can tell, oh, I have an imbalance or I'm wearing an inauthentic color or, you know, anything like that. A lot of it is feeling disconnect. I think that would be the big thing. Um, not looking forward to things, feeling like, what's the point? Um, feeling, And I'm not talking about actual depression or something that needs treatment. I'm talking about fe- like feeling, and it's okay to have feelings. It's okay not to always feel great that's authentic. That's okay. But it's kind of when there's a pattern of it. And it's also when you got, if you got to hype yourself up to go to work every day. And when you're there, you're just kind of, there's like a voice in your head, like this is, I don't like, let's walk out or whatever. Like you start to notice in your body too. I notice when we don't listen to our energy, our body starts speaking. That's when it gets real stressful. So and every aura color has some sort of body talk thing. Like I notice with blues, it'll be hormonal imbalance. I notice in yellows, sometimes it's tummy troubles. I'll notice in purples, it can be like mental issues or even addiction. So I'll see different physical symptoms when your body's trying to speak to you because your aura, you're not listening to yourself. So that'll happen. So there's, it's kind of like a mental thing, a mental fatigue, a mental disconnect, and then your body's starting to really hurt in different ways and you feel out of control. So those are the things I'll see. Also, I'll feel like people in your life, you're just not connecting as much as you'd like to. So you're not feeling as present in your relationships or even with yourself. And you're not feeling... It's, it's, it's too hard to have sometimes like a conversation with somebody. It can feel like this is so much work. I can't, I can't connect with anybody else right now. It's like a fog. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so those types of symptoms can mean that you might need an energy reboot. Yeah. I love hearing it from your point of view because it's an energy thing. I mean, I, I think intuitively we've all been there before. We felt those times where we're either burnt out or we don't have motivation to do anything. And it's, you know, I, I just thought it was a intuitive thing, but it, you're right. It's like, it's our energy and it does become like your body. It does become physical at some point. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's amazing how people too, like how many, just cause I've read so many people, I feel like people don't listen to their emotions and count them as reason enough to stop doing something. So they'll wait until they get really ill or sick or incapacitated and, oh, well, now I really can't because I have this problem going on. And it's like, oh, you know, like we could have backed it up. And if we were more a welcoming society, which we're not, but you can do it for yourself or, you know what, I don't want to anymore. And that's okay. 
and that's okay. And then taking personal responsibility and, okay, how am I going to fix it? Because a lot of times we talk ourselves out of fixing things or changing things up to accommodate our emotional needs because we're told that that's unnecessary or silly or not how things are done or irresponsible or immature or foolish or whatever. So it's erasing all that negative speak that's really programmed from our 3D society and going into, nope, I don't want to. And if I don't listen to that, that's going to become a real problem for me later. So I'm going to pay attention to that. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. Okay. What about, um, relationships? Like, you know, people's and like, let's talk about when energies mix, like, and, and another question follow up to that is like, how do you protect your energy from the people around you? So yeah, like, cause you see it visually, can you describe what happens? Say you're in like a room or like maybe you're at a concert or, or a room, like a party where you see people's energies mixing. What does that look like? And what happens? No, this happened to me this morning. So this happened to me all the time, but this happened to me this morning. So it's like, oh my gosh, you could tell the story. Okay, so I walk in to get a bagel at my (laughs) at my favorite coffee bagel shop this morning. And I walk in and I meet and I see auras all the time. So it takes a lot. It's kind of like seeing people's hair color or outfits. Unless it's wacky, you don't notice it. Okay. But I saw this woman's aura at the register. I mean, it was a crowded restaurant today. And I was like, oh my God. And it was just, I call it, it was a shade of purple. I call it hot mess purple. It looks like, (laughs) it's just, it was a lot. It was, and it was all, there was also this deep, dark kind of blue in her. So I feel like she was really sad inside, but it was coming out more, uh uh-oh. So I walk up to the register and you better believe she's like yelling at them for making, you know, I don't like that. You know, talking to customer service in not a nice way. And it was like a whole problem. And I just was like, if she understood, and like inside I felt it, like, you know, and if she just understood that you're walking around like this and you're causing people to feel this way around you, how are you functioning like with your, in your kids' relationships, with your marriage, with neighbors, with friends, you know, with yourself, um, how caustic your energy is, you know what I mean? And you kind of want to help somebody when you feel like that, but you know they're not open to it, so that's <laughs> hard. So anyway, so, yeah. but we all, I think, can get vibes on people. Um, maybe I can see it before, you know, quicker or whatever, because I'll go to just even Target and I'll look at, all right, who's the quickest? I just look at or it's like, who's the one who can get me out of here the quickest or whatever, like cashier. So, but I think we can all sense it no matter what, um, in relationships, how it works, we think everyone thinks like we do. I think that's just human nature, but they don't. And you can kind of understand this through aura colors. So for example, yellow auras like to ask a lot of questions. And if you're in a relationship with a red aura, they might be like, why are you trying to know so much about me? Are you trying to control me or something? So like that miss that miscommunication, that misinterpretation of people's energies, I see a lot can be solved a lot if you understand their aura colors. Okay. And, and you'd be like, okay, hold on. That's just them being interested, asking questions. Or maybe when I ask them questions, they think I'm trying to control them or be nosy or find something out, and I'm not. Mm-hmm. So just, you know, understanding each other yeah, can help with aura colors. Right. So when it's a stranger, it's okay to like keep your boundaries, but say it's like a parent or like someone that's, you know, whether it's a toxic person in your life or just someone whose energy is, I, I don't know, what, what do you do? Do you protect your energy and how, what, what do you recommend to people? Yeah, you're right. It's easy when it's a stranger. It's a little easier when it's even a friend but or a coworker, but when it's family, that's the toughest. So um, especially if it's like your parent or your kid or like, you know, it's or somebody you just, you know, mother-in-law, somebody you cannot erase from your life. They're there. Right. I mean, there's no easy solution. It's more just, I say it, it's an opportunity to observe and gain insight in yourself. So my big thing is, for example, I just read this lady and she's living with her mother-in-law and that's not going to change. Okay. And this woman is obviously very insecure 
that sh- her son and her uh, daughter-in-law are taking care of her financially. She's insecure about it. That's her own issue. Nobody's making her feel that way. You know, that's her own thing. So because she's not aware of herself, she was constantly, say- you know, bringing up, look what I did for you. Ugh, like acting like they were the inconvenience being mm. there. And so every time this woman would come home, she was greeted with this energy of, I don't want you here. And look what I've done for you all day and whatnot. So how do you deal with that? So... A lot of the message was about um, her using this up. Just because you can feel this woman's feelings doesn't mean that it's your job to defend yourself, to fix her interpretation of you, or to play chess with her about it. You have to walk in and get your milk or get your coffee from the kitchen, have her roll her eyes at you, whatever, and go to your space. And this is going to be hard, but it will get easier as you realize, like, that's your stuff, and I am not embrace, I'm not taking it in to fix. I'm not taking mm-hmm. it in my world. Yeah. So kind of being observational helps treating it kind of like, oh, here we go. I'm walking into my science experiment, you know, kind <laughs> of like, let's right. see, let's see how I can do this today. Right. And just not owning it, mm-hmm. just not owning it. It's easier said than done, especially when you have an empath aura because you want everyone to love you and you want, you know, she felt her mother-in-law's insecurity. She wants to fix it. Be like, you're loved here. Stop it. You know, but she's never going to listen to it because she needs to feel this way. And, um, and so it's kind of, a, it's what you can control. You can't control other people, but you can control your own responses to it. And sometimes understanding how you operate in your aura colors can help you navigate a path to doing that. Right. I see. Okay. So given, I mean, hearing that it's almost like your aura colors, not just your personality, but also like your beliefs and your mindset. Like you you hold this energy around you. That's your beliefs, right? Like the insecurity and okay. Interesting. Cause I'll see, um, there's always a flip side to every aura and Mm -hmm. I'll call it like an ego hijacking. So that's like a great question. So your ego, I'm sure you talk about this on here all the time, is the part, you know, that human part of you that doesn't like change. And it can hijack your energy colors sometimes. So if you're a blue, you know, I'm using blue a lot as an example, and you're an impassionate, compassionate giver, and you're empathic, and you just want to give, give, give all the time. If your ego hijacks it, you can be like, hey, I give all the time, but nobody gives to me. Mm -hmm. And instead of speaking up, you can start getting resentful right. and then you can start getting kind of victim mentality. And then that becomes your narrative. You know, I'm always planning the parties, but nobody plans my party. And then when somebody goes to plan you a party, like your ego has hijacked your blue. So you're like, you know, you, you, you have a hard time receiving it or you'll subconsciously shut it down. Like, no, I don't want that. Or, or if they, if somebody gives you a gift, you're like, who, why would you give me this? You know? So it's kind of like, you need to stay in a certain narrative, but Every aura color has its own ego hijacked flip side, which is always fun to find in yourself because we've all been there. Right. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it's interesting to put it that way because then how, yeah, how would you advise people who aren't aware of this? Like how, you know, how how do they become aware of it and how to not do this? Listen, if you're listening to any of this, like if you're honestly, probably most of your listeners are open. They're like taking notes. They're like, okay, how can I be better? How can I? I don't think it's like your podcast listeners that have the the issue. Because I think like people that come to spaces like yours are open to introspection and they're open to, okay, you know, we're all human and we slip up and that's okay. That's part of our evolution. And, and maybe they think about times in the past where they were like this. I know I've been like that in the past, you know, so, oh my gosh, I did used to operate that way. Thank goodness I don't do that now. Wait, are there anywhere, any places I'm doing it? So if you're, if you're just mindful, your ego can't hide it from you. So, you know, if you're mindful, your ego can't hide it from you. If you're worried about it at all, That probably means that you care because there's a lot of people out there that aren't thinking like this at all. They don't care. They have no idea what I'm saying. (laughs) No. Like that lady at the bagel shop today, like she has no idea what I'm saying. You know, that's just, they feel like they have to go through life that way. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how the world works for them. So, but yeah, your listeners are fine. (laughs) I'm sure. (laughs) Thanks for that. (laughs) Um, Okay. So another quick question is like, you know, what about hugging? Do you refrain from hugging people? (laughs) What is your stance on that? (laughs) Knowing that your energy is so, you know, there's transfer happening. 
I love that question, Eileen. That is so good. I, it's, you know, that's an interesting. In at least America, it's a culture to like hug people, even strangers, right? So yeah, what's your, what is your opinion on this? I was raised Irish Catholic, so I feel like we're not huggers. And I actually get, and I married into a Jewish family and they like, are always hugging. And I'm like, okay. (laughs) So I know what you mean about the culture thing. But have you ever like met somebody and you're like, you know what? Let's hug. You know, like some, I'm sure like you've met some of your listeners and you're like, oh my gosh, you know, and you're like, oh, you know, like sometimes you feel that bond and you're like, we're hugging, you know, like, but I, I do refrain. I think I do refrain. I don't even like shaking hands. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, sometimes I do get that vibe. Like, I don't really want to shake this person's hand or I don't really want to hug them, but they're coming in. So <laughs> like they're coming for it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you get real stiff, you know, um, that's really funny. I've never thought of it that way before. Cause I get, and I think like, maybe we think we're mean if we don't. So I never hug people either, unless I feel like they're making the move for it. And then I'm like, okay, but yeah. That's really funny. That's so funny. you don't usually like, but you don't like turn it away and set a, a boundary or I'm just, yeah, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> no, I think I do. I, I know what you're getting at. My, my husband actually, so I'm indigo. So I am very, um, how do I say this? Like I'm very sensitive. hypersensitive. Yeah. yeah. I'm very sensitive. So uh, I get overwhelmed quickly. So what I learned how to do from a little girl is I say, go invisible. Like I go mm-hmm. off radar. I think a lot of us do that. Um, but it's kind of like, and I'm really good at it. And I feel like I can be somebody in their room that you didn't even know was there. And I do it on purpose. And it's my own way of like self-protecting. I see a lot of indigos doing this. How it's hindered me in life <laughs> is I don't get called on for things or nobody notices me for the opportunity or, you know, things like that. It, it has hindered me in life. So it's it's kind of like my energetic reaction that's hindered me kind of you know, it's something I I try to pay attention to, um, Mm -hmm. in myself, but anyways, yeah, I think I also do that because I don't want anybody like, don't touch me, don't talk to me. Um, because I get so easily flustered or overwhelmed, um, when there's a lot of people coming at me, but that is an indigo thing. Indigos can only work one-on-one usually with people. Like, so I'll see like a lot of indigos as speech therapists or, um, you know, things like that, where you're kind of one-on-one with somebody. I see. I see. Um, What about like, I guess, cleansing our energy? Like say you met someone or you went to a party or, you know, you want to come back home and like reset. What are some ways or advice you have for people? Have you ever just met somebody and you just like go straight home and just strip and just go straight into the shower? I feel like... (laughs) We've all, or you just had a day and you're just like, you need power. Yeah, yeah. Like, nobody talked to me. And you just go straight and then you turn it up as hot as you can. You just lay there. You're just like, oh my God. Showers are helpful. <laughs> I think showers are good. But I think the age old tricks like salt baths, showers, eucalyptus, you know, essential oils. I see you have a dog back there, like just throwing yourself in your dog's fur. I feel like all that kind of stuff is cleansing nature. Um, HZ frequency music. I'm sure you've talked about all this kind of thing, but it's really great for your aura. And finally, I think the biggest thing to cleanse your aura is just like a little bit more time consuming is listening to yourself in terms of journaling, in terms Mm -hmm. of, you know, maybe you're not a journaler, but maybe talking to yourself in your head or writing it, you know, or whatever you need to do to kind of have a narrative with yourself or a conversation with yourself. Like, hey, I, I tell people to do kind of like, um, I call it, it's kind of like just like a feelings check. Like three times a day, <laughs> just ask yourself, how am I feeling? And then just say three words without thinking about it. It is so hard if you're not used to doing it because you could be like, oh my God, like hungry. You might even get base ones, like hungry, tired, anxious. And then that's it. That's all you have to do. You're going to get better at it the more you Mm -hmm. go. This is another way to cleanse your aura because you're learning how to identify feelings in yourself, which honestly will correlate back to your energy and your energy health. So um, just, yeah, because different aura colors kind of gravitate towards different feelings and you can find the motivations towards those feelings behind it too. You know, like I'm anxious because I got this email and it seemed like they were saying that 
I'm not doing enough, or at least I took it that way. Why am I feeling like that? You know, kind of like just having a conversation with yourself. Right. So, I I mean, basically it's just like self-awareness, self-reflection practices, just like getting more in tune and touch with yourself, whether it's like journaling or that feelings check or, yeah, I I love how these are things that people not like, you know, I've heard of these things, we intuitively do it, but now I have another reason to do it. Yeah, like you, this is your whole brand, you know, like, so you, so you're, it's a different angle that I'm like, oh yeah, that makes so much sense. Because your mind is one thing, let's go into our energy. Um, sometimes our energy can influence our mind. So, and and then like your 3D thoughts versus your 5D thoughts and just, you know, trying to just, just have, just throwing yourself in there and having a conversation with yourself. Like, a, you know, I do it all the time, like a crazy person, but I don't care. And I, I think that it just, it helps. Yeah. yeah. And it, cleans, it cleanses you, makes you feel heard and validated. In order to be heard and validated by the universe, you really have to hear and validate yourself. Mm. And that's what Aura's colors, that's what Aura colors can do for you. They can validate yourself. They give you uh, tools to self-validate. Right. You mentioned earlier about like music and sound. Like, can you tell us about what happens to auras when we listen to different music? Because I've heard there are specific frequencies that are really good for healing or like those sound bowls. So like, can you verify (laughs) based on what you see? Oh yeah. And I don't want to be like, a downer because I love music and Uh I got my Spotify out, but sometimes I'm like, don't listen to certain music. Like like what and why? Yeah. I think like when I really am in this space, like sometimes I'll feel fragile or what, or like energetically a little like tested or something's going on. I'll pick more high vibe frequencies. So that's when you hear me listening to my spirit, my spiritual trap music or <laughs> you have to send my, me these playlists. I need oh to know God. what you're listening to. <laughs> I, Please it to link it. Link it. Yeah. I, I made my own like, um, that's so funny. I made my own Spotify playlist. Cause I'm like, here's my all my spiritual trap music or something, or just, I'll go on YouTube and just listen to HC frequencies, you know, just for, just for, you know, I hear it in my head and sound bowls. I go to, I've been starting to go to, um, sound baths more frequently now. It just, you, even if you're laying there in the middle of it being like, I don't know, like, it's interesting because it lasts longer after you're like, okay, wait a second. I do feel calmer kind Mm -hmm. of. So it's just, I feel like when I'm feeling energetically frazzled or I'm having a hard time with clarity, I will turn to my listening and be like, okay, how can I assist? Anything helps, right? Anything helps. And it's kind of, even if you make, and, and I stay away from my angry rap music, basically. <laughs> so like that's kind of like, you know, there's only so much anger you can take. And then, you know, I just started like, you know what, I'm going to help. I'm going to just support myself with some other options. Right. during this time. So that's what I do. Okay. That's really interesting. <laughs> Are there any crazy or interesting stories that you'd like to share based on your work with clients? All right. So every once in a while, and it's very, very rare, I'll see someone with like a rainbow aura. <laughs> and I can, I can't, probably like only five or six times I've seen this. It's very, very rare. So and this is where it gets a little bit like crazy psychic. Per- like even if you listen to this whole thing, you're like, all right. This is where you might be like, Mm-mm. and I get that. And I'll tell you that I get it. So I, my big thing is I can only tell you what I see and what I feel. I don't know what it means. You can make up your own. You can follow that to wherever you want. I'll only tell you what I know and what I get. So I read this one person and she had a rainbow aura and it just looked like a rainbow. It looked like yeah, look like a rainbow. I don't know. You know, it just, I was like, why are you a rainbow? And it wasn't like switching colors all over the place. It was a rainbow. And what was interesting was, is usually when I read people, I get messages and I, I call it your spirit guides are the ones delivering it. So they feel like a high vibrational team of, you can call them whatever you want, celestial beings or just high vibrational energies, but they're intelligent and they do seem assigned to you specifically. And you, and everybody has their own kind of kind of, they don't show themselves to me. I just kind of feel their energy. Anywho, she did not have that same kind of information coming from her. It felt like very different and it felt something a little bit cosmic and, or something 
that isn't of isn't like human in nature. Almost like if on the other side or where I was getting, it was a different department, I guess. <laughs> if you want to consider the other side kind of like a corporate office, it was like, oh. what department's giving me that info? And that's what it felt like. And just talking to her, and she was really just different and, and whatnot, and she kind of felt galactic or whatever. So this is what I, I call them star seeds. So when I see a rainbow or a person, I'm like, I think that's a star seed. They're not a human. <laughs> <laughs> like this is their first incarnation as a human, or maybe their first, or like maybe, you know, first couple recent incarnations as a human. I don't know. Take it what you will. I've only read maybe maybe five or six of them. Yeah, but that's a good amount. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, right? They're cool people and they're very like sweet, but they're very different. Very, um, very, very different. We'll put yeah, it that so way. Yeah, so what would you yeah. say is the purpose of someone who has all the colors? You know, usually like just on my limited knowledge of reading just a few of them, they usually have kind of like a more, they're very, they don't understand humanity. And I know all of us are like, we don't understand it either. Um, Especially when you see war or struggle or just this fight and political stuff. It's like, what is this? Come on. They don't, it's like more than that. Like they really can't get it. That's one. Two, they float kind of above social relationships. So usually it's really hard for them to be in a relationship, but honestly, they don't want one. Like they're okay. So that's another thing. And three, they're usually like really into cosmic stuff and they feel comfortable. I don't know. When I look at like those NASA space photos, they're beautiful, but it's also like, ooh, because I can't, I don't know. Like I like earth and I'm fine here. So I, they're like, no, I want to go there. I feel connected to it in just a different way than the rest of us. So it's kind of, they have a kind of different, more uh, glow, maybe universe view than we do. So that's my weird thing. I love that. Thanks for sharing. (laughs) All right. um, We have time for one that, I mean, last piece. Can you share your last piece of advice for people who want to develop their intuition and be able to just be more in tune with themselves and their energy? The best thing you can do for yourself is honestly sit down and just ask yourself, what do I like in my life and what don't I like? And it's it's not complaining and it's not low vibe and it's not negative and you're not being ungrateful or anything like that. It's you just taking an honest inventory. Like, what works for me? What doesn't work for me? And then take another step back and be like, okay, why do I like the things that work for me? Why don't I like the things that don't work for me? And really just sit, and then this can take a while. And having this just roll out for you, I feel like is going to give you just a better scope of you, your energy, your life purpose, why you're here. Why A lot of times we put so much energy towards things that are never going to work out for us. Why don't you take that instead and put it towards things that are going to work out for you? Um, and what aren't you doing in that way because you're afraid? You're afraid of other people's opinions or that you won't, you know, that you won't survive or you won't be able to pay bills or things like that. Like, just sit there and be like, well, if that was out of the picture, other people's opinions or how the world works or whatever, what would I want to do? And I feel like that, it doesn't sound like intuition. That's that's really you talking to your soul and letting your soul talk to you. Because you came here for a purpose and your purpose wants to reveal itself to you. And so all you have to do is sit and listen. Beautiful. I I got chills when you said that. Thank you. (laughs) All right, Michaela, where can we find you online? You can find me at Mystic Michaela on Instagram and at the Mystic Michaela on TikTok. And you also have a podcast. And my podcast is Know Your Aura. Thank you with Mystic Michaela. And you can take the aura quiz at knowyouraura.com. Yes. Love it. Thank you. Everyone will share all the links down below. I so enjoyed this conversation. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, Eileen. I love being here. <laughs> <laughs>